synthesis. Okay, and Buddhism can bring a lot in this, uh, in this uh, debate. Why? Because a Buddhist could notice that Western civilization became so enticed by the objective targets of their technologies that they overlooked the fact that every research originates in human minds and consciousness. Consciousness is the departure point of everything, including of the conviction that the brain could be the origin of consciousness. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is absolutely obvious, but so obvious that no one <laughs> seems to pay attention to, to this. Uh, and I remember a friend recently told me something about the teaching of a famous Tibetan master who said, this is so obvious that you will not believe it. This is so simple that you will not understand. And I think this, the fact that an act of consciousness comes before anything, including the conviction that the brain is the origin of consciousness, is one of these facts that is too simple to be believed. Okay? But, and I, but fortunately, some philosophers in the West were aware of this problem. And Edmund Husserl, whom I, I will uh, expound very uh, much more at length tomorrow, uh, have, had understand that. According to Husserl, this forgetfulness, this oblivion of the primacy of consciousness triggered what he called the crisis of European sciences. European science, namely Western science, uh, is both amazingly successful but full of difficulties and paradoxes. One of them is the hard problem of consciousness, another one is the measurement problem, the cat paradox in quantum physics and so on and so on. All these paradoxes completely disappear as soon as you understand that the whole inquiry starts with an act of consciousness. So by engaging with Buddhism, researchers gain a first-hand contemplative approach to consciousness which enables them to overturn the ill-posed problem of its material origin. When they realize that every problem they ask is asked in an act of consciousness, then they understand that the problem was ill-posed. By the way, I can tell you my own story on this point, because it illustrates what I say, I'm saying. I, I was, uh, you know, I was uh, in 2008 to a summer school of mind and life uh, in Garrison, New York, and uh, there was a harsh debate about consciousness. Even Buddhist scientists sometimes have, are very reductionist. And uh, I, I was trying to, to, to argue with them, to, to convince them, and so on. And they tried to convince me, of course. And uh, we didn't reach any conclusion. Uh, arguments were equal. They, they could not really convince each other. And then, fortunately, there was one day of meditation. <laughs> one day, complete silence. Meditation, only one day. And I must say, for the whole uh, session of the morning, my mind was extremely uh, buzzing, active, and I was thinking of, of this argument again and again and again, you know, argument for and against reductionism and so on. I was meditating, but quite uh, poorly. <laughs> and, uh, okay, then there was the afternoon, and at, at the middle of the afternoon, when Barry Kersin, maybe you know him, uh, um, offered us to practice open presence, suddenly I saw, you know, all this buzzing of the mind as buzzing of the mind and nothing more. And what was beyond this buzzing of the mind or below this buzzing of the mind was the pure awareness. Awareness that there were these activities of the mind. So I, so, and suddenly I, say, I jumped 
during the meditation and say, that's it, that's the solution. The solution is not an intellectual solution, it's realization. Realization that consciousness is there before any question is raised and that questions, discussions, arguments, intellectual uh, activities are all you know, swimming in a, an ocean of consciousness. So this, this, is, uh, this is how I convinced myself, not by an argument, by, but rather by an, an experience.